Dick, how was it out there today? Well, it was great. Uh, I'm very, very pleased that I was in track and field and we were able to uh, do the long jump to get on the ice over the water with our skates under our arms. Once we get out here, it was absolutely phenomenal. One of my best accomplishments in speed skating and back to 1961, I had just gotten married and I was coaching the uh, Wilmington speed skating team. And the youngsters, I had a meeting with the parents and I said, what I would appreciate if you kids would get your youngsters up there on Thursday, if at all possible, but you have to get your youngsters there to Buffalo by at least Friday. So they have to get a chance to get on the ice all the while, I knew I was not going to be able to go. My wife was pregnant with our second youngster, and we, we had one infant. And all day long on that Friday, I'm up on 12-foot ladders, and I'm, I'm pulling on two-foot pipe wrenches uh, down at BU. We were putting in a, uh, a renovation on Boston University. And I was, I was not a happy camper. I knew the kind of condition I was in, and I had trained very, very hard. And I would clock, I had a buddy of mine clocking me, and I was right on record performance. And I had tried to break that record three times before that and came within a second, a second and a half. And I said, this would have been it. Not to be. I get home from work. My wife said to me, how would you like to go to Buffalo? I said, Pat, this is not the time to kid with me. She said, no, no, I'm serious. Uh, the Kendricks, he is a machinist. He's going to get out of work at 12 midnight. They're going to be at the house and pick us up. We drove to Buffalo in a snowstorm. It was brutal. We got there 45 minutes before the championship started on Saturday. We had driven all night, all kinds of problems. Needless to say, I grabbed a couple of thirds, one second, and not doing that well. But I said, okay. So Pat said, look, let's take the Kendricks out for dinner. We'll get a good night's sleep. I know, I know why you're here. You want to break the, the North American two-mile record? And I said, yeah. I said, so. Everything transpired, and I ended up with a, you know, a nice breakfast after a good night's sleep, and I got to the rink, and I was feeling excellent. And I get on the starting line, and in the finals, they had 10 skaters, and that's, that's a full house. You figure it's a 100-meter oval, 16 laps the mile and tight quarters and my I had my skates they were like a razor and they started off and two skaters from Canada and another skater from out in Chicago broke away from the field and I'm looking at the other skaters and the horsepower in that race was phenomenal I'm saying why isn't somebody I'm thinking why isn't somebody moving Finally, I looked across the track and these three skaters had a half a lap on us. I got myself in a fourth spot. I come out of fourth spot, went right over the top and I put on a chase. I caught the three skaters. Now there were four of us in the lead and I broke away from the three skaters I was with and I lapped them. And I really, really dug in hard. I had a good tempo going when I caught those three skaters and I wasn't gonna back down and rest on them. And finally, on the final lap, I was full bore and ended up crossing the line. I heard one of the timers say something about he missed it by three seconds and I'm cooling down and I said, it can't be, it can't be. I waited a while and finally out of the, out of the loudspeaker, Eddie Dame had set the record at six minutes, two seconds, point three. 
and I had just set the new North American record at 559.6. But yeah, that was that was probably the most proudest day I ever ever spent in a rink. I thoroughly enjoy being a spectator um, at especially cyclocross races. I get my bell and get out on a hill and uh, cheer on the riders and uh, get caught up in the uh, electricity of the, the atmosphere from the spectators. Over the years, uh, right from day one, I've had a great deal of enjoyment from two sports, the sport of bicycle racing and the sport of speed skating. And I feel very, very fortunate. And what I would like to do is see somebody else have as much enjoyment as I had in getting themselves involved in either speed skating or bicycle racing. And, you know, that that is all I'm looking for, that to pass on some information about the sports and hoping that, that you might get involved. I was tipped off on how to compete, how to be a good competitor. And, you know, I was always told, you're never gonna be a good winner if you're not a good loser. And everybody, you know, oh, wow, the only thing is winning. Well, there's a little more to it than that. Uh, it's how you handle yourself at a speed skating championship or a bicycle race. You know, you don't, you don't do it with your mouth, you do it with your legs, and then, when you get done, either take on the role of being an official, a marshal at a race, just anything that you can do to make the sport a little bit better. You never know what's around the corner. You're gonna run into adversity somewhere along the line. And same thing in competing. You don't know what's gonna happen from one race to the next. And you've gotta be able to deal with it mentally and physically. You can't go off the wall. You've gotta keep yourself together. I think uh, over the years with bringing out five kids and having the background of sports and how to keep it together during championships, when things go wrong in the house, whether it be kids needing braces, uh, the engine in your car went, you come home from work and the refrigerator just went south, and all of these things that crop up or something happened to one of your youngsters, you know how to settle in and handle it. You don't go off the wall and just not being able to get, get your act together to put things right. Mm -hmm.